Hello, photography. I uh, wanted to show you how to assemble your images into a triptych or a diptych um, or any kind of um, time where you want to put multiple pictures together. Um, the way that I would start with doing this in Photopea is to go ahead and open up a new file, not just opening up a picture, but we're just going to open up a blank canvas. And I had already kind of preset this a little bit, but when you first see it, you're going to see this as pixels. I like to change it to inches just so it's easier for me to visualize. And then I set my dimension to 20, my width, and my height to 8, because I'm looking to make a horizontal um, arrangement. And then you want to set your DPI higher. I'd go 300 just to more easily match the photographs that you're going to be uploading. You might have to resize things a little bit. And then for the background, I'm going to set it to transparent right now. Um, I think it might make sense to go ahead and add a new layer. And I'm going to decide what color I want the background to be. So I'm going to make it black and then I'm going to paint it. So now I have a black background to work with. Then I need to open up a picture and I had kind of preset some of these already. Um, a while back I did some compositions of bolts. Uh, actually I actually have a lot more that I picked through, but I thought these three would make for a nice composition horizontally. And then I also have some photographs I did of hot sauce, which happens to be one of my passions. Uh, so I was going to show you a different or possible arrangement with these. So let's open up the bolts first. Let's open up this picture, and it's going to open up in a separate window. And probably the easiest way that I found to do this in Photopea versus Photoshop is to select the image. And I use the um, box selector here. And if I hold the button, there's other shapes you can use too, but rectangle works well for what we're doing. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy it. And then I'm going to paste it. And that paste it into a new layer. Now, like I said, you are going to have to resize the picture a little bit. I, um, I hit the uh, little uh, move tool here so I can kind of move it around. And what we'll do is we'll go transform and scale. And then I'm holding shift while I do this. I know you can't see me do that. But if I hold shift, it will keep my aspect ratio so that it won't stretch the picture all out. And then I can go ahead and click yes. Um, there's other kinds of commands that you can use if you're actually using Photoshop, but this, this is how you'd want to do it in Photopea. And then I'm going to close this because I don't want to have too much open at one time or kind of slows the program down. I'm going to open up my middle picture. Okay. And again, using the rectangle selector, I'm going to go ahead and select this. And we're going to copy it. And we're going to go back to our file, and I will paste that. And again, it's a little bit big, so I'm going to resize that. So I'm going to go into Transform, Scale, and I will hold Shift here while I'm doing this just to keep the aspect ratio. Oops, hit the hold shift that time. Do you see, if you don't hold shift, you can end up stretching your picture out. You see like that, which I don't want to distort it, right? So let me, let me do that again. Scale. And again, I got to hold shift while I'm doing this, and that will lock the aspect ratio into place. I got to leave some room here for my other photos, so I think I might go just a little bit smaller with this. That looks pretty good. We'll confirm it. And I'm going to open up my last photo. And I labeled these so it was easy for me to figure out. Um, I did make a few decisions about the layout. 
and you're going to want to think a bit about your layout. This picture here, not so much the other ones that I had, but this picture here points. You know, you can see I have this bolt here, which is really like directional. It's leading the eye. And the reason why I'm putting it on the right side is because I want to lead the eye into the composition, not out of the composition. So that might be something that you want to think about when you're arranging your images. Now, if you're telling a story with your photos, you might need to arrange it based on the story, but this is more of like a compositional thing. It's more visual. It's more a study of elements. And so it didn't matter so much about where they're placed. It was more about visually what looked good. So same thing, and I'm going to close my old one here just so I'm not like um, straining my network connection. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and select this. And we'll copy it. And we will paste it. And just like before, we are going to need to resize this. I'll hit scale, holding shift, and reducing the size. Now I will say, if you're using Photoshop, a lot of this is a bit easier to do, and it'll actually give you guidelines, which will help you see where these things connect. But PhotoP is a fine alternative, and um, it works just great. You might have to do a few more clicks to make things happen, but I like it. And we're good. I think that looks pretty good. Let me just pivot the middle one a little bit just to make sure that it's arranged the way I want it. I'm just gonna move that just a tad. And then I'm gonna go back and notice I'm going between my different layers. This layer here has the one on the right side. This layer, you can kind of see um, on the background there where it's at, this is the middle picture. And then the layer I'm on right now, layer two, is this one um, over here on the left, which I think I need to reposition a little. Um, let me go back actually, I want to reposition. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's it. So this looks pretty good to me. Um, I will tell you that if you get into a situation where you need more space to work with or you need to change the shape of this canvas that you have, you can go into canvas size, not image size. Image size changes everything, but canvas size will change the size of the background or the canvas so that way I can give myself a little more space. So let's do that. Um, all right now, like we had before, see it, it gave me the pixels. I don't like pixels. I want to look at it as inches. Let's say I want to give it a little bit more space on the uh, top and bottom. Maybe we'll make it nine instead of eight. And so that's going to add some space, but do realize that now it's revealed some of that transparent portion of the canvas. So I'm going to go back to my um, black layer and I'm going to go ahead and select the paint bucket and we're just going to paint it again. So that way it's all filled in. Oh, we all look at that. That looks nice. Okay. We need to save it. Let me just click or get rid of that one picture I still had open. Um, <clears throat> I can save a PSD. Um, that will save the workable file. Um, or I can export it as a JPEG. So let me save it as a PSD. Now the reason why you might want to save it as a PSD file is because you might want to rework this image later. So I'm going to go ahead and download that so I have it. And then I'm going to export it as a JPEG because I actually like the way this one looks. And so now I will have a JPEG version of this as well. Um, this all looks good to me. Um, if you want, you can turn your quality up higher. 70% is probably fine. A lot of times I recommend going up all the way, but in this case, it's a giant file anyway because we have three pictures in here and it's a big canvas, so I'm okay with 70%. And now we have our picture, and they're all assembled into one, 
and this just gives your project a little bit of finish and makes it so when you post it, they're all laid out the way that you want them to be. Um, let me show you one more example. So I'm going to go ahead and close this.